reading. Damn, I forgot what all that shit just said. Stormtroopers with infamous bad aim somehow managed to actually kill enough rebel soldiers here to take over the ship. They survived this. Darth Vader could choke fools just by using a hand gesture. We learned that later on in this very movie. So why is he getting all touch me in the morning with this rebel scum, man? Vader's got to get that close to a guy who's committed his life to overthrowing the government. You get that close, homie can grab Vader's lightsaber and kill the Sith out of Mr. Suddenly Touchy Feely. Yo, Vader, choke that chicken from across the room, bro. And bring me the passengers. I want them alive. You didn't seem to have a problem firing on the ship or having your stormtroopers blasting away when they torched the door down. Leia's plan is to shoot once at four stormtroopers, then Prometheus' school of running away from things into the open hallway that offers no cover. I'm not getting in bed. Didn't Vader tell these fools he wanted passengers alive? Hey, it's a good thing that the Star Destroyer didn't completely swallow the smaller ship, or else this escape pod would have crashed into the floor somewhere. Hold your fire. There's no life forms. Unless this is the first day that droids were released to an unsuspecting buying public, everyone in the galaxy knows about droids and their capabilities, but they just let the escape pod go because of no life forms. They don't even want to shoot the thing down just to be safe, man. These guys are the biggest fuck-ups in all the Star Wars movies. They must have short-circuited. Oh, right. You're right. That stupid assumption is the most likely reason for an escape pod to jettison from a recently captured rebel ship under siege. An escape pod was jettisoned during the fighting, but no life forms were aboard. You mean an escape pod? Like one escape pod? Why did the other guy say, There goes another one. Which implies more than one. Droids are moving so slowly that there's no way they shouldn't be caught immediately by Vader's troopers. R2? Well, that's convenient. They spent the whole afternoon going in opposite directions and still got to the same place. Those Jawas cover some damn ground, man. Also, do they have this main sand crawler ship going around while they dump off loads of Jawas to hide in the mountains in case lost robots show up? I guess you're right, George. This scene felt so incomplete without the CGI riding lizard in the background. Also, isn't it lucky that these things have claws that don't leave any tracks? That makes their appearance more cost-effective and unrealistic. Look, sir, droids. That conveniently drop pieces of themselves along the way like breadcrumbs. Robot roll call. I suppose you're programmed for etiquette and protocol. Uncle Owen rejects droids immediately with a simple no, and knows exactly what C-3PO does just by looking at him, but mysteriously talks to him anyway. I'm guessing so C-3PO can persuade Uncle Owen to buy him. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. All right, every right-thinking human being on the planet is gonna sin this awkward line, and it's equally sinnable reading. Heavens, we were looking for some Damon here, and we got some Affleck instead. But this power converter thing sounds like a lie to me, man. Like when my friend Malcolm would say, I'm going to sit walk, eh? And then he'd secretly hook up with dudes at bear bars. So I'm saying Luke wanted to go to Tashi, but it wasn't his power he wanted converted. He was sneaking away for public restroom rendezvous with Arcturians, man. Male or female, don't matter with Arcturian, baby. Red droid melts down conveniently so that R2 can get a job and stay with his buddy. Hey, what are you trying to push on us? Hey, yeah, I mean, I thought you were reputable salesmen with, with your sand crawler full of random robot selections. What about that one? What about that blue one? You mean the one you instantly dismissed earlier? Luke is a teenager who plays with Model T-16 Skyhoppers. Probably so you knew what to buy when you went to the toy store. I'm not even sure which planet I'm on. Well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. He's a droid. It's not your dude, bro. He doesn't understand sarcasm, man. Homie may be fluent in over six million forms of communication, but wise ass ain't one of them. Stop confusing your sex droids. Wait, they're not sex droids? The ones shaped like a human and little Mr. Right Height? They're not sex droids. Eh, then that's a sin right there. Who is she? She's beautiful. How can you tell? It's a blue hologram full of 1970s-ness. Also, if he can discern whether she's beautiful or not, why can't he figure out that this is Princess Leia? You know about the Civil War going on, and she has the title of princess, so how is she unfamiliar to you? I'm called Obi-Wan Kenobi. I thought he might have meant Old Ben. Say, both these guys named Kenobi. You think they know each other? Homie changes the Obi-Wan part of his name and keeps the easily identifying Kenobi last name. If he'd gone with Ben Johnson, literally none of the rest of this movie could ever happen, man. And don't tell me it's because Kenobi knew one day, or one day, Luke would need to find him, man. He's in hiding, like all the Jedi that are left alive. Just admit it, man. Dude's got a good heart, but he chose a stupid, stupid alias. He has too much of his father in him. That's what I'm afraid of. Understatement foreshadowing. Is that undershadowing? How is it this dark out with two sons? You'd think the combined power would make it look like daytime out here. Also, suns this close together would cause wicked insanity on this planet. One sun would heat the other sun, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. The director said, okay Luke, just stare at the suns, because any line you might say would honestly make this scene worse. It's too dangerous with all the sand people around. That's racist. Look at there's a droid on the scanner. Dead ahead. Thank God we went in the one direction R2 did so we could find him. Hit the accelerator! Who's driving this thing? You or C-3PO? <laughs> He's probably saying, hold your fire, there's no life forms. Obvious reverse job is obvious, but instead of killing Luke, he just knocks him out for some reason. How did he knock him out? 
It can't be with the weapon he's holding. That's sure death if you get hit by that thing. Now that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Obi-Wan basically half truths his way through this entire movie. I was once a Jedi Knight, the same as your father. Now this is the first time Luke's even hearing about his Jedi dad, but the real news here is that his uncle has been lying his ass off for years, man. Forget the dad you never knew stuff. This Uncle Owen, this farmer who's trying to pull moisture out of the desert like a dick, he's the liar you always thought he was, man. Your whole life is a lie. Get your revenge, Luke. You go back and you burn your lion uncle alive right in front of his own house. Oh, too late. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. Damn, Obi-Wan, you might have wanted to tell Luke which way to point that thing before turning it on. Which is what I tell all my sex droids. Luke could have accidentally cut off the head of Old Man Exposition. Movie franchise nearly sends Obi-Wan to his death 75 minutes too early, ending said movie franchise again. The Force? The Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. And something about midichlorians, but that's not nearly as cool as what I'm saying. It surrounds us and penetrates us. The Force kind of sounds like a sex offender. Years ago, you served my father in the Clone Wars. Anytime you want to tell Luke that this is his long-lost sister, here's your chance, Obi-Wan. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Oh, look at Mr. Keeping It Real, man. This has to be his first day on the job, am I right? Has Darth Vader never shown his powers at any time during this guy's life? I imagine that right before he left for work, his wife was telling him, you gotta be more assertive in that job if you want to get ahead, honey. Don't be afraid to speak your mind to your bosses. They like people who challenge them. Slow-ass stormtroopers only recently killed these Jawa fools. They left the Star Destroyer one minute after the droids, but are somehow a day and a half behind. What the f***? It looks like the sand people did this all right. I've never heard of them hitting anything this big before. They didn't. But we are meant to think they did. Because Imperial stormtroopers know a sh ton about Tatooine and sand people in order to frame their ass. And these last points, too accurate for sand people, only Imperial stormtroopers are so precise. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know we gotta get Luke into space somehow, but the stormtroopers just go and melt his aunt and uncle and don't think, I don't know, maybe we should ask some questions. Maybe we should figure out if this boy is coming home soon. Maybe with the droids we're looking for. But they don't, man. They just leave. They just create destruction, just leave. You know what would have been more metal than this? If they ripped the flesh from these dirt farmers' bones and dressed up in their skins. Can you imagine that? Luke comes home and he's greeted by stormtroopers wearing the bloody skins of Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen draped over their helmets. And they're asking about droids. Like, I would tell them anything, man. I'd even tell them what I was really doing whenever I went to Tashi Station. Oh, I see the Death Star has branded their truth serum robot so that all visitors know this isn't some knockoff Death Star shit here. Also, how is Leia able to deny the truth serum's effects? Don't tell me she's a Jedi. We don't know that yet. And she doesn't know that yet. And if she Jedi'd her way out of this somehow, Vader would have sensed it. Obi-Wan said, Okay, C-3PO, let's burn a giant pile of Jawa bodies, because that's the absolute last of their race, and no one will ever miss them. Burials are for closers only. I want to come with you to Alderaan. Even though I have tons of other options at this point. Also, Luke doesn't seem all that broken up about his aunt and uncle dying, does he? He must have had a titanic cry on the way to the Jawa massacre site. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Except Gary, Indiana, of course. Ew, you've got some obvious phantom menace in my new hope. I can't abide those jobbers. Disgusting creatures. That's racist. This iconic tavern scene does not contain an alien lap dance. Among the many creatures here, Satan also likes to hang out in the cantina. That's bassist. We don't serve their kind here. 3PO gets a taste of his own racist medicine 90 seconds after dismissing the Jawas. I don't like the look of this. All the unnecessarily added CGI bullshit. Me neither. Like every other citizen of the first world with enough time on their hands to care about this kind of shit, we're also mad that Han no longer shoots Greedo first like the cold-blooded badass he was in the 1977 cut of the movie. So we're going to sit in this. But did you have to make Greedo such a horrible shot? This might be the worst shot in the history of movies. Man, he's literally three feet away and he misses like a dick. Dude's supposed to be a bounty hunter. Is this his first day on the job? Like the mouthy guy in the Death Star? Is Star Wars really a movie about a bunch of people starting their first day at a new job? Han is addicted to Jabba's tail, and these special effects are addicted to the audience. What's that flashing? Luke is the most annoying backseat driver since your mom. Commence primary ignition. It takes 10 seconds for the Death Star to shoot its laser after this. Remember that, kids, when this takes forever later. This yellow monster dies immediately from getting lifted. What a pussy. You mean it controls your actions? Partially. But it also obeys your commands. Oh. 
Wait, what? Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Yeah, but I'm gonna guess your eyes don't deceive you as much as everything else you use to detect things. It's not like the Jedi's going around blindfolding each other before a lightsaber match. <laughs> yeah, what a bunch of bullshit that is. This asshole Luke isn't feeling the force already after spending just a couple hours with that floaty ball. I call it luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. You just experience luck. It's okay to give in and accept it. Let the hate flow through you. I told you she would never consciously betray the rebellion. And to emphasize this point, I'm going to start gesturing after I talk. Terminate her. Immediately. Immediately on the Death Star means f***ing around for a couple of hours waiting for the Millennium Falcon to arrive and save the day. Ah, uh, we come out of hyperspace with meteor showers. Did they get out of hyperspace just before chunks of Alderaan slammed into their ship? Because in my experience, that's some serious luck right there. Also lucky is that the Death Star just happens to be around Alderaan right now. That way you can save Princess Leia and this trip won't be meaningless. Well, he ain't gonna be around long enough to tell anybody about us. Why is it taking so long to get in range to blast this one little TIE fighter? This ship made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. They must be trying to return the stolen plans to the princess. She may yet be of some use to us. You can't possibly think that they'll get the idea to rescue Leia from her prison, or that they'll even find out she's here. Remember, it takes a crazy-ass plan to get into the control room and R2 messing around with the computer to even find out that information. Even if you have an idea to capture them, put them in Leia's cell, and hope she blabs to them about where the secret base is, this is silly. Leia bullshit you and proved too strong for the mind probe, so she's officially useless. Darth Vader needs to start setting up charges on the Millennium Falcon, take the Death Star plans back, destroy Luke, and execute Leia at the same time, while his children get baptized in the Catholic Church, Godfather style. Oh, wait. There's no one on board, sir. Let me get this straight. You have sensors that can tell whether there are life forms on an escape pod, but you can't detect life forms on a ship inside the Death Star? Knowing this, anybody could send a ship full of killer droids buried in the floorboards to kill and take out the entire Empire. And people bitch about our TSA. I sense something. A presence I've not felt since... Since when? Since when? There's no one here. They've already reported to Vader that no one is here, so these stormtroopers were sent on the ship to basically, what, walk around and confirm what the last crew of stormtroopers just did a second ago? The stormtroopers are still on the ramp exiting the ship, and Han picks this exact moment to open the secret panel on the floor. And also, I guess he figures there's no way they're coming back, or that it could be a trick. I use them for smuggling. Yeah, bone smuggling. Snooch! I apologize that that joke fell forced. Snooch again! But here's the thing. Your big conflict with Jabba was that you had to let go of cargo when you got boarded, man, but you have all these secret panels in the floor that the Empire can't find. So why do you ever sweat getting boarded? Sounds like a rookie move, like maybe it was your first day on the job or something like that. This movie is just like the office in outer space, man. Han is Jim, Luke is Dwight, and Greedo is like Ryan the Temp. And why did Obi-Wan get his own compartment while Luke and Han had to go three-way with the Wookiee? That beats my fanfiction, but why? The scanners pick up anything reported immediately. Oh, so this is the scanning team. Why didn't some of the stormtroopers stay on board until the scanning team was ready to go? Scanning the ship requires loading this huge cumbersome box on the ship itself. I know this is set a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but you have technology that beats us here in 2015. And I know that simple heat signature technology would tell us there are assholes on this ship. Blaster fire inside heavily guarded ship raises no alarm or suspicion. It sure is lucky that Han and Luke blasted the two stormtroopers with the exact same size uniforms they needed. And those suits are remarkably intact after getting blasted a second ago. You know, between his howling and your blasting everything inside, it's a wonder the whole station doesn't know we're here. Luke Skywalker, too, would be excellent at cinema sense. Phallic data extraction. Also, thankfully, the Death Star has a computer port that has access to the entire station that also happens to match R2-D2's output thingy. What is it? I'm afraid I'm not quite sure, sir. He says I found her and keeps repeating she's here. C-3PO defines the problem with the pronoun game while R2-D2 plays it. Well, who? Who has he found? Princess Leia. You just said you didn't know who he was talking about. And R2-D2 has not said anything since the conversation started. Well, more wealth than you can imagine. Luke is drawn by the power of boners to take on the whole goddamn Death Star. And Han is drawn by the power of money boners. There is no way the Empire created something so innocent and jovial. Stormtrooper aim is only good while good guys occupy the costumes, although it still kind of takes them a while too. Boring conversation anyway. I'm surprised this radio didn't shoot Han first. Han and Chewie somehow need to retreat while holding this super tiny opening in the elevator these troopers have carved. Then, the entire rest of this scene, none of the Imperial troopers come down this hall and fire into this obvious escape hole into the garbage compactor. Everyone survives this. Will you forget it? I already tried it! It's magnetically sealed! Bullshit. When did you ever have time to try shooting the door before Han jumped down to shoot, man? He jumped down four seconds after you did. And hell, Chewbacca was standing there at the door when Han landed. So you're a lying fuck, Luke Skywalker. I call you Fib Fortuna.
That's a Deep Cuts reference, man. Achievement unlocked. There's something alive in here. The Empire just recently threw a live swimming creature into this garbage disposal, just before our heroes jumped down in it. Because how else would it have survived the numerous amounts of compacting unless it's Gumby or some shit? How does Luke get swallowed whole by the shallow water this creature is in? Okay, at this point, Luke is dead. That dude drowned. He comes from a desert planet with virtually no water, and no practice with water. He's out of his element. The Empire is a dick to tall stormtroopers. If you hurry, you might catch them! These still aren't the droids we're looking for. What?! <laughs> yeah, what? Thank God for extremely slow trash compactors. Blast them! Han shoots one guy and the entire stormtrooper unit starts running away. And it's not like they're setting a logical trap, because the ship is in a different direction. <laughs> Will Storm Helm Trooper. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Basically, I'll be able to occasionally talk to Luke through ghost power. So there. Honestly, this is pretty badass, and it makes sense for the plot, too. Obi-Wan knows he's outmatched, he knows Luke would stick around to try and save him and would never get on the ship. And so, we will remove five sins for Obi-Wan's badassery right here. No! No. Here's a blanket, Luke. Wouldn't want you to catch cold or some sh**. That's it! We did it! We did it! For the record, Princess Leia is a badass, but in this scene, she didn't do anything. You're sure the homing beacon is secure aboard their ship? This might explain why the stormtroopers were so awful at shooting our heroes earlier. But how did they coordinate this plan with everyone on the Death Star? Was it, make the shooting look good but don't hit them, you might die but it's for the greater good? Or did Vader set it up so the heroes could escape but didn't mind if they got killed in the process? They're tracking us. Not this ship, sister. Well, your male confidence certainly is convincing. I guess we should just go straight to the Rebel base without any precautions. An analysis of the plans provided by Princess Leia. Princess Leia. We'll hear all your stories when we get back, all right? We'll be like old times, Luke. They'll never stop us. <laughs> this guy is trying to jinx the entire mission, and he's definitely dead. We're passing through the magnetic field. For some reason, the Death Star doesn't use its tractor beam to render these ships useless. Obi-Wan turned it off, but he didn't destroy it. I'm going in. Cover me, Porkins. What have I told you about calling me Porkins? We've analyzed their attack, sir, and there is a danger. Should I have your ship standing by? Or maybe get some of our ships in formation over the one weakness this entire space station has, so that a direct hit doesn't destroy us. Vader locks on his target, then immediately sprays fire over everything except his target for the first two seconds of firing. <laughs> Just like old times, man. They'll never stop you. Use the force, Luke. Your targeting computer is a piece of dog shit, Luke. Commence primary ignition. Okay, guys, this took 10 seconds with Alderaan, so it's gonna take about as long to- Holy sh**! And it takes 48 seconds for this thing to even get close to firing, man. So the first time they use it, the Death Star unleashes a massive payload all over the face, neck, and chest of Alderaan. That money shots it out of existence. But it takes way longer if it wants to go again. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. This is the most erotically charged line in the movie. And something I say to Jason Mewes whenever we go to City Walk, if you follow me. <laughs> God, how can you not get the chills? I'll take another five off for Luke's hit here because the execution of this scene is awesome. <laughs> hey man, in the excitement, I'd call her Carrie too. On some nights, she might be Darlene. You don't know, role playing can be a powerful tool. Oh my God, that's his sister, isn't it? How come Chewbacca doesn't get a medal, man? He was in the Falcon too. He helped take out Vader and save Luke's ass. And look, he even yells about it. At this point, he goes like, where's my medal? And everyone just claps. Like, yay, the status quo is maintained on this little animal farm, where all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. This is horse shit. It's always bothered me about this movie, man. Let the Wookiee win a medal. Is it really winning, since he so clearly deserves it? I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> They're dying, R2. Curse my metal body. I wasn't fast enough. It's all my fault. Three weeks after we started Cinema Sins, Kevin Smith tweeted about us. <laughs> Once we were revived by medical personnel, Is anyone here a marine biologist? We noticed a super obvious Kevin Smith has tweeted about you rise in our subscribers and statistics. This man put us on the map. I gave you back the map, we Heather. Gave you the map. I gave you back the map. We figured the best way to thank him was to ask him to guest narrate the sins of maybe the biggest geek movie we could ever see. We'd also thought you'd like to know he has a YouTube channel, which we'll link in the description below, where you can check out videos of Fat Man on Batman, Hollywood Babylon, and more. Please go show him some love. Thanks, Kevin. Ever since Cinema Sins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. Space, a final frontier. R2D2, where are you? Where are you? 
we got some work to do now. This is ground control to Major Tom. You really made it great. Tommy, how's the peeping? Every day that man remains free is one more failure. 347 days, gentlemen. 347 failures! Terminate her immediately. Not tomorrow, not after breakfast, now!